This is a Piece of the Attraction podcast with leading dating and attraction expert for men, Kezia Noble. Gloves off conversations, exchanges, debates and confessions that dish up the insights and serve the solutions. Now over to the lady herself. Welcome to a Piece of the Attraction podcast. For over a decade, my team and I have been helping men from across the globe enhance their lifestyles, improve their attraction skills, and maximize their confidence and potential in order to be their best and most authentic selves. The content here is unfiltered, and hopefully in this over-filtered era we all currently inhabit, our straight-talking advice, our honest confessions and insights will cut through all the niceties and serve to help you action better choices. This is a Piece of the Attraction podcast. Remember, you can find and download all the episodes on Stitcher, Overcast, Spotify and iTunes. On today's show, we'll be examining the differences between approaching, attracting and dating girls from the US compared with girls from the UK and Europe. The land of the free versus the land of hope and glory. Are the differences huge? Hmm, not really. However, those small social and cultural nuances when overlooked can cause annoying little setbacks and annoying little consequences. Why annoying? Because when one is aware of them, one can effortlessly calibrate between the two cultures. And who better to reveal those differences than our guests today? They are instructors on both our UK and our USA boot camps and have been doing this for a long time. Guest one, Hadassah, one of the incredibly insightful, knowledgeable female instructors on the team. She's been helping the men who come to us since the dawn of the company back in 2009. She specializes in helping men with their conversation skills by showing them how to make impactful connections that mentally and emotionally stimulate a woman's desire. Once upon a time in a galaxy far, far away, Hadassah was what can only be described as painfully shy, but her successful struggle to overcome it has not only given her the ability to help our more shy students to overcome their approach and social anxieties, but it also allows her to give a direct insight into the shy girl's mindset and behaviors. Guest two, sitting on the other side of the spectrum to Hadassah, Jossie, the wild bad boy of the team. Women find his cheeky, unapologetic directness hard to resist. His undiluted man-to-man advice and straight-talking feedback provides a much-needed tonic in this often very filtered and very precious climate we're all currently inhabiting. As we say in England, he's a lad. Josie joined my team in 2014 as one of the principal instructors on our boot camps, both in the UK and USA. He's all about showing unapologetic intent, taking the lead and helping men to become the attractive versions of themselves that women lust after, as opposed to wanting to friend zone. But his trademark speciality is rapid sexual escalation. Sound fair, guys? So, Americans and Brits... I'm going to start this off. Cool. Okay. Years ago, a guy said to me that he went to Disneyland with his family, or Disney World, one of them, and Mickey Mouse comes along. A guy dressed as Mickey Mouse, right? Not the Mickey Mouse, a guy dressed as Mickey Mouse. And he said the American family's really sort of got on board with it. They went, oh my God, it's Mickey. It's Mickey. And they were like really excited about it. And the English guy just looked over with his family and just said, fuck off. And I think this is like the premise, the, 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 and neither's right or wrong. This is not about right or wrong, but the Brits have a very kind of cynical sense of humor. And I think that does massively affect how mm. British women are gamed and how American women are gamed. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's very deadpan. Um, so if you go to the States, I've noticed this. I don't know if you, I don't know how, how it's been playing with men, but when I'm sarcastic with girls over there, they don't really get it necessarily. Mm. 
Um, so you've almost got to play up to that sort of, you know, charming uh, Colin Firth style character. And then they, yeah, they're more relaxed around it. But just being like the standard banter in the UK, it doesn't really work on American girls. It is changing. Things. I think American humour, I've noticed, is becoming a lot more dry, is becoming mm. a lot more cynical. It is. But I think that's like in the last 15 years, maybe. I think they've started watching a lot more British yes. TV and stuff. So but I've noticed you know. that like, their comedies, are, are, I'm laughing a lot more than I used to. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to, you know, like when I was growing up, it was stuff like Cheers and Roseanne, and, and you know, they were cool, they were funny, but it wasn't our kind of humour. And then I think something like um, Frasier, sort of, that became much more dry, cutting humour. And then ever since then, I've noticed that the humours are like more dry and cutting. But my point is that you, you can come from any class and from any culture in Britain, but if you get the humour, mm-hmm. It can, it can kind of like, that just overtakes, you know, all the kind of differences that you might have. It's a, it's a bonder, it's I a leveller. I think it's the main form of connection we have amongst each other British. in Britain. It's, if you have a friend, it's based on laughter. You don't even have to have anything in common with them. As long as you're laughing, it's, mm-hmm. that's fine. But I feel like maybe in other parts of the world, maybe America, I think also in Europe, um, they look maybe for other things to connect on things in common, mm-hmm. um, similar mindsets of, but in England, not so much. It cuts through. Humour yeah. cuts through. And I think men find um, humour in women very attractive. Also, as do women find yeah. find humour. It's, it's such a bonder. And um, we have a class system in this country. It's, it's still there. Very so you've much. got, for instance, you've got, like, say, uh, let's, let's take it to London. Mm-hmm. You've got the Chelsea group. They genuinely don't date outside the Chelsea it's group. It's very cliquey. And the Essex are the same. They yeah, will not date absolutely. outside Essex. But when it has happened, like with our seven-day mastery program students, when it has happened, it's the humour. It's the humour that cut through those, those the class system or the, the social differences. But, I mean, with the humour point, I think the British, the, the attractive thing about the British thing is men self-depreciating. Like, in a, in a, in a banter way. Self-deprecating, yeah. Self, okay, self-deprecating, clearly getting it right. Private education versus Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> no, I was, I was at a better private school than you. Oh, I bet it was a good one, wasn't it? It wasn't St George's. That was my primary school, duh. Okay, right. No, but the point I was making is um, American men, they don't, uh, they don't do this. They don't put themselves down in a humorous way, whereas British men do. And it's quite a cool yeah. trait. I think it works quite well. Yeah. I'll tell you something about the Americans, though. They're go-getters. Yeah. They have that go-getter mentality. Uh, you, you, you spent you, quite a long time in America. Yeah. You were living there at some point, and um, you know you were just approached so much more. And I'm approached so much more when I'm in America. It's like a, it's very much a you snooze, you lose. Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. I think people do go and start conversations with people, regardless of if it's attraction or if it's just to be friendly. I think it's just more accepted there. And I was thinking about this, and I think the the issue is in in Britain, we look at it as a, being a pro. Or, Approaching someone we don't know is something entitled. It's intrusive and we have to self-deprecate. Like you said, it's... You self-depreciate, you mean? Self-depreciate. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not going to let that one go. But it's true. It's, we, we have to... Play, everything has to be downplayed. It has to take a little bite of humble pie. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, but in England, they can overdo it. They can, oh, it does. It, it's, so it's self, true. Self-deprecation so. is very, very good. I mean, it's fantastic, but... Some British guys, especially the ones that come to us, they overkill it, mm-hmm. and then it becomes like phony. You know, it's like oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like a, they've become apologetic. They, 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 it's like see a anything self-fulfilling else, parody. See anything else is being bragging. Yeah, exactly. Whereas the Americans, I just they're go getters. They are opportunists. So they, if they, for instance, I noticed this in the bar. Like if if I if a guy approaches me in a bar in America, and I you know give him the heave ho. Another guy will use that as an opportunity to talk to me. Mm-hmm. So he'll, he'll springboard from the other guy's downfall <laughs> and be like, oh, who's that jerk? You know, or something like that. Whereas the British will look at it and go, don't go near her. Don't mm-hmm. go near her. She just blew a guy out. So I think that's a big difference. They're more sociable people. So it's- they are. And it's not, if you go to the States, it's not really doing game. People are just, they'll talk so- to each other and they'll ask each other out for a coffee straight away. It's far more sociable. We, we find it's easier to get, you know, the approaching so much easier in America, especially in our boot camps in Vegas. Mm-hmm. So easy. Well, everyone's there for a good time as well, so they're, they're going to be more sociable, as well as the fact they're generally American. So it's just, it's, yeah, it's sociability on steroids in Vegas. Sociability on steroids. Do you think, though, well, this is kind of like a loaded question, that it's like um, a false sense of security it creates? 
In what sense? Well, I know what you mean. Yeah, so they go in and the guy's like, especially a guy who's not American will go to America and be like, oh yeah, she really likes me because she's smiling and she's actually talking to me, whereas a European girl would have walked off by mm, now. That is true. I sometimes feel that the escalation is I harder. Think it's, I think British people, when they go to America and they, they see that, they, and I was, I definitely felt this when I was living in America. What part um, are you living in just uh, I was living in North Carolina, which is... Uh, Fuck's that? Exactly. No, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, but it's um, <laughs> it's really lovely. It sounds like there's mountains and there and, and is mountains. there is there lots of bears and people yeah. shooting bears yeah. and it's exactly what sounds like my kind of place. Not. But I found um, I met a lot of people there, and I thought we had this amazing bond Gosh. of friendship. <laughs> and I was thinking, I'm going back to England, and this friendship's gonna last the test of time. And it was like the moment I touched down in the UK, I was like, thank you so much for looking after me. And they're like, yeah. yeah. Who's this? Who? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that really shocked me. And I think it's not I because I, was, yeah. I don't think it was because anyone was insincere. I think it's me. I think I misconstrued because I'm Because the so British are like that. The British are not warm. So they did. fervent yeah. kind of a lovely friendship <laughs> straight away from someone I didn't know that but No, well. but that's, that's a European thing. So if someone's being really nice to you in mm. Europe, it's like buddies for life, it can feel like, you know, because like that doesn't happen. But in America, everyone's like kind of being friendly to each other. There's a lot, from a guy's point of view, there's a lot of false positives. So like you said, they'll get into a conversation and girls being very, very friendly. And then there's a massive flake rate. So you do, you ha do have to be careful with it. I think some places are worse than others, though. Like New York's very fast paced. Yeah. Um, so conversations tend to be shorter. But somewhere like San Diego that we talk about. Yeah. People seem a bit more genuine there. The the pace of life is slower. And San Francisco too. I San find. Francisco as well. But there's still, I still feel, and we've done boot camps. I mean, we only do boot camps now in Vegas, and we'll talk about why we chose Vegas out of mm -hmm. all of them in the end. But we've done boot camps in San Diego and LA, loads of them. And I know what you mean about San Diego. It is a bit more relaxed, and people are less sort of self promoting there. But they still have that friendly and, and, and opportunistic kind of vibe about them. That's why America's so good for doing day game, especially if you are English, any of the English guys watching, because your accent pays dividends. Mm. And yeah, people are just more friendly. Like it's yeah. easier just to, to get into conversations. It's not about, oh, I've got to gear myself up to approach her. People are just very, very receptive. Because you didn't someone buy us dinner in LA because they liked our accent. <laughs> we yeah. we were actually it dinner. works the other way around then. Yeah. Okay. They just, he just said, I've paid for your dinner. It was lovely. So I said, oh, accents. fuck, this guy's yeah. going to be on our case. And he's like, no, it just brought me pleasure to hear these, to have these two beautiful women next to me talking or something. And that beautiful like that. accent. And it's left. That's, That's it. it? Yes. Jesus. King Bill's like okay. so much. Anyway, yeah, I'd have ordered a bit more than more. <laughs> okay. Um, in England, okay, so let's take it back to England, the difference. Approaching is harder. Mm -hmm. Approaching is harder. Uh, I think... I don't think it's the hardest place. France is the worst. Yes. Well, they're basically France, banning France, it. France, they're France, banning oh, it in France Paris now. You, you're not... You're no, not I looked into it. I know loads of French guys. They're still there chatting up women in the streets. It's, it's not banned They made a big deal about it, though, didn't they? They're making a hoo-ha about it, but... Uh, Flirting or la la about it, I should yeah. say. But no, it's still happening. But it's just incredibly... Even before that, it's. Inc I had private students. I used to go out to Paris because my ex-husband lived in Paris, so it kind of like worked out. And um, so he was from Paris. And uh, it was like, people just do not talk to each other. You have to be introduced. It's It's got a lot of Catholic undertones, I've always said, France. But it's, it's a very unfriendly city, Paris. It whereas is. south of France is more, more, more chilled, I think. Yes, it is. Yeah, Saint Tropez is a good place to meet mm. women, but um, it's still clicky. They've got these friends and they've got these circles, and you have to be formally introduced. It's very, very difficult. Um, so yeah, I I think though Europe on the whole, even Holland, which is a friendly place, done loads of boot camps in, in Amsterdam. Very, very friendly, chill people, right? But still, it's that approach. There's, it's met it's with this kind of cynicism. Like, like, what do you want? It's more like Britain, I'd say. It is for Germany and. Holland more like Britain in terms of approaching yeah. than France, which is really looked on with a lot of scepticism. Yeah, that's the worst. That is the worst. Um, but but my point is that once you've got past that approach and you're in comfort and you're having that full blown conversation, sexual escalation is easier in Europe mm -hmm. than in America. Because as I said, in America, when guys are talking to women, they're getting caught up, going, "This is going really well," and then she's like, "Okay, bye." It's a misunderstanding. And the next and the person. Connection. Any advice for that? 
I think it depends on the environment, doesn't it? I mean, if it's a club, mm-hmm. you just... Well, kind of, I'm talking... I know you're... You talk about more day game sort of stuff. No, no, I'm talking about clubs, actually. I think... No, I think you can I escalate. Mean, go, go with day game if you want. If you're, if you're talking about Vegas specifically, I think if you're talking to a girl there, it's... I don't know. I, I think it's game on, personally, because... Vegas is super easy. Yeah. Massively. Yeah. But somewhere else, maybe, yeah, you are better going for the instant date rather than taking the number. Just yeah. to see. Just to see. Yeah. Um, you know what? They love a winner, Americans. They love a winner. I always say the British love an underdog. Yeah. But Americans, yeah. they love a winner. Whoever it is, as long as you are showing that winning sort of men- mentality. And I think that when you approach a woman in America, she's, she's, you're showing immediate confidence because they're set, sensing go-getter. And they respect that immediately. Whereas in Europe, it's kind of like, you know, don't get ahead of yourself, right? Don't get ahead of yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, get back in your place. I'll tell you when you're there. That's what I find also. Mm-hmm. I think also Americans have um, much more in the culture to look up to in terms of who's on TV, what kind of men. Then, and they're quite um, a lot of alpha, very well-dressed, very slick kind of guys on their TV shows, mm-hmm. on their movies. And I was trying to think, we don't really have any in Britain Apart from maybe James Bond, and then and Josie, and Josie, but who can who can relate to James Bond? Who can really relate to him? I can. I think I think the uh, <laughs> the recent movies are actually a bit more. They show Daniel Craig basically failing a bit more. That's why they're awful. No, that's why yes, they're, they're not. They're, they're that's shit. You see, he's, he's the a true Brit. Yeah. We're not. That's the underdog. We're not. Thing. He's a true Brit. They, so they, they, like true, they were true, true Brits watching um, the Roger Moore Bond films. Roger Moore was a parody. That was no, a joke. he wasn't. Just okay, we all know it's Timothy Dalton's the best yes, one. Yes, I agree with that. Timothy Dalton? Yes. yes. Shitting me. Why? Why? Why not? That is a man. Sean Connery, every fucking time. Didn't he beat the women in uh, in those ones, in those early ones? Not sure, but... <laughs> not sure. <laughs> haven't watched them the as closely as we have. Oh, clearly, okay. Timothy Dalton. Sure. No. Timothy Dalton's the man. He only did two. Like, yeah, three. it was under you. He got bent off because he was so shit. Sure. No, because they stopped making Bond films until 1995. Okay, she's watching. No, 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 movies. she's she's a real fanatic. You have gotta be careful there what you're saying. But I know I agree with you. I was in Serbia with a with a student recently, and he basically went back. He had two same day lays, and it was pure American confidence. He sat there basically talking about himself, but because he did it so confidently, the girl and the girl probably couldn't speak much English. Then he just sort of took her home. So it, it does it does pay dividends, and American guys are almost better playing up to that stereotype rather than trying to almost be kind of the funny British guy because it doesn't really doesn't really match from mm-hmm. my experience. You mentioned that we've got nobody that's really slick here on the mm. British TV. Right, I did some research. So the two most sexy people, a male and a female, voted 2000, I think 2017 or 2018. I think it was 2018. One was British, one was American. Which one do you think was the British one, the woman or the man? Woman. Man. Is that your final answer? Wait a second, wait, wait, wait a second. Is it character or person or real person? Person, real person. Tick tock, tick British. 100%. You say the man was British and the woman when was you probably English. And, and, and who was it voted by? Uh, it was by... Um, uh, it was, by British or American I can't remember the voters. website, but it's like the official one. But British or American voters? I think it was a mix. I think it was American. Then they might pick a British guy. Okay, is that your final answer? It was a British guy. Who was it? When was this? It wasn't John Leslie. This is what sexiest, <laughs> sexiest TV character. No, sex, sex is sexiest. Sexiest guy. Full yeah. Stop. So it's, I guess an actor or singer or something. I reckon it'll be someone like Tom Hardy. Done. Well done. Well, Tom Hardy's Tom Hardy. That's. I good. would never have put him up there. Would you not? You've not put Cillian Murphy up there. You've not seen him play Heathcliff. Oh. I'm, um, su- I'm surprised you wouldn't have seen that. No, most, he's an attractive guy. Most, but girls I I speak to, most girls I speak to, if you're playing, you know, Never Have I Ever, he's, stuff like that, their one celebrity fuck would be Tom Hardy. No, he's Murphy. not Every my time. type. But he's he's not, was, he was playing opposite really Cillian type. Murphy in Peaky Blinders, well, and Cillian Murphy is like the best looking guy no, on the No, but it's not just, planet. is this best looking or sexiest? Sexiest. Yeah, so it's he's the whole rough and ready okay, bad boy So shit. he came number one. Which, who came number one for the women? And I've never heard her name, by the way, but he'll know her. Josie will know her. Uh, it's Couldn't guess. Not... It's American. She's American. Uh, Model. No, uh, I was, I was I thinking Margot Robbie, but she's Australian. She came up high, but... No, no idea. Hillary Clinton. No, I'm kidding. It was, uh... 
It, it was someone called Kate Upton. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look at that smile. I know <laughs> yes. the name, I don't Definitely. know the face. She makes you look small-chested. She's literally like this. It's fucking insane. I mean, I've never heard of Californian, her. Californian, Googled like, her. hot girl. She's really pretty, but it's kind of like... Um, no, it's the classic American blonde Yeah, she's, she's very pretty. She's very pretty girl. I've never heard of her in name. my life. We're so out of the fucking loop, me and you. No, I know the name. I actually know, I know the face. So, yeah. So, there, that goes against what you said. The best-looking guy in the world, currently sexiest guy, is a British guy. But is it guy. because of the characters he plays? And is his past, he's like used to be a crackhead from nothing, like mm. now just goes around. What do you mean crackhead from nothing? He comes crackhead. from Richmond. I just sit no, down he comes train. from Richmond. No, 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 no. He was all washed <laughs> he up. He sits there and talks about how he's all those, hey, like hey, really hey. rough crackheads. He's from Richmond. No, 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 no. no. I'm near Richmond. We have our fair share of crackheads. <laughs> yeah. Tom Hardy's not here. It's like family read, with like drama around, teachers. Read around family his profile. Family with drama teachers. Read around his profile. Oh, she has already. Yeah. Yeah. She's Jussie, beating me the fun. You are so. that That is despicable. You're saying nobody from Richmond can take crack. How dare you? He talks about his rough, rough background. I'm just not buying it. I think it's a bit of an act. A bit like Josie. Very yeah, much absolutely. like Private school, well, yeah. Absolutely. Got the tattoos. Absolutely. These are all for show. They're actually tense. See, like Tom Hardy, covered in tattoos. Yeah. He's not covered in tattoos. Yes, he is. Right, okay, moving swiftly on. Did you know that British prefer to date someone that they already know compared to Americans? That's a little fact I picked up. I can believe that. Mm. So you don't lot... approach people so much. Yeah. So they're stuck in their circles, British people. Most guys will either meet a girl drunk in a club through their mates or on Tinder. But that's kind of not actually. Are you anti-Tinder? Massively. Me yeah. too. Massively. I hate it. I never used it. Have you ever used it ever? Never. Never any dating no, apps? Never, never used a dating app. I had to do online, um, when I was doing research for my book, Online, Date, uh, online Dating Success for Men, mm -hmm. I went undercover to find out what works, what doesn't, but I've never used it personally. So what, you set up like a fake profile and stuff? Yeah, 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 is that legal? No, maybe not, I didn't. Maybe in a dream Cat somewhere. A galaxy you are, far yeah. away. You are somebody else. Moving on. Um, so yeah, that's a fact. Booze, this is a big one. Mm -hmm. The British are big for boozing, as you two know. <laughs> me. I'm teetotal, me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, um, the British are like, okay, Europe, I just think booze more. Drink, sorry, in case Americans don't want boozers or something. But they drink a lot more than Americans. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. So yeah. if you're, if I'm in a club in, in England, I don't really go clubs, if I'm in a bar in, in Britain, um, the guys, I get looked at a lot. But the guys who actually approach me are either, guess what, Americans. Um, or it will be um, super, super confident guys. Or it, it will be drunk men. Mm -hmm. And it'll be like at the end of the night and they've been drinking and it's it's shit, it's horrible. But I think then a lot of guys who are talking to women and women talking to ugh, guys talking to women, British women, do they do you think that they realise that the girl's like half cut already when he's talking to her? I think uh, to be fair, I think British girls booze a fair bit as well. <laughs> no, that's what I meant. That's what that's what I meant. So Well the guys do, do they... it for confidence, to build up the confidence. And the girls I think it's just a drinking culture. The, the girls do it to make the guys look better looking. Possibly the big or <laughs> fake, yeah, possibly. Yeah. Okay, fine. But yeah, in the, in the States, it's, it's, I actually, when I've gone to clubs with guys, they'll just go, sit, they'll stand at the bar and just do, a, do like a shot. Mm. They won't like necessarily buy a drink, which I find strange. They'll just do a shot of alcohol. They won't get drunk. They will in Vegas, but generally speaking, guys here will get hammered. Yeah, just I hammered. know, I know. And it, On a regular it, night out. Yeah. And that's the only way that, I, I call it this, um, the British social dis-ease. Mm -hmm. It's that they don't feel comfortable unless, and you know why? Um, the British apparently, out everyone in the world love costume parties so much because they can hide behind a character. Really? Yes. So in America they're big on it, but not like they are. Britain is number yeah. one for costume parties. And when my ex-husband came to this country, he's like, why does everyone have a fucking costume party? Why can't people just be themselves and be normal? I'm like, it's, it's the British See, dis -ease. I was surprised. I thought we got that from America. Yeah, but they did it because, oh, isn't this fun? You know, they did it for like Halloween probably or some shit. But the British, they're starting to do it more and more and more. Like just a fucking normal party and everyone's dressed up as like, I don't, I don't know, a giant fucking toothpaste or something with moronic. I always say that, by the way, yeah, guys, yeah, good... guys, please, if you are going to go to a costume party, take full advantage of it. Police officers, um, Richard Gere, whatever he was dressed as in that film, that's that famous film. He's wearing um, the white um, naval officer navy, and a gentleman. navy officer and a gentleman. Okay, navy. Do you know? You told it to me. The, the navy. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, nodding. He's nodding. Um, and fireman, all that. 
but stop dressing as like no, no. giant tampons and stuff like that. One guy, he when came at a Halloween party. Oh. It wasn't a tampon. It was a Halloween party. And he said, I'm the biggest fright of your life. And he came as a pregnancy test. Like a fucking, he was dressed in white with two blue lines across his That's stomach. Amazing, no, but it's, no, but you're seeing going, oh, what a lad probably. Yeah, but it's unattractive for a woman sitting there talking to a giant pregnancy test. <laughs> I just think men need to really, guys, just That's take someone in a long term relationship. All the women no are dressed idea, like, what, was, what did Pedro call it? All the women are dressed like Halloween nurses. That's what he calls it. And like sexy oh. vampire prostitutes. I don't know, whatever it is. And all the men are dressed up as Burks, you know, Scooby Doo or some shit. I just don't understand it. Right. Why, are we, why did we choose Vegas? Why did we settle for Vegas in the end? Why are all our boot camps in Vegas? Just because it's an environment geared towards getting absolutely fucked up and everyone there to have a good time and, and, and just get on it. That's yeah. Josie's version. Let's look at the real okay, version. That's, I <laughs> no, oh, no, I, okay, the first one is that there's multiple sets, day and night. So every other boot camp that we did, even in LA and New York, there were dead spots. There's like dead really? times in New York. Yeah. In New York, yep. I yeah, thought it did. was 24 hour buzzy city. Yeah, but it, then it, people are going to work and they're just like, yeah, <laughs> on a Saturday. Way, I'm in New York. Yeah, move. <laughs> <laughs> move, bitch. <laughs> Get out the way. How do you do New York accent? Way. <laughs> um, this is my accent. soup. <laughs> the rest of the podcast hey, will now Tony, be Get out in a fucking way. Okay, <laughs> it wasn't like that at all. Where were we doing day game in Harlem Times or Square. something? Harlem? No, of course not. <laughs> Fucking Harlem. Take Tom Hardy with you. <laughs> That's where Kezia was staying. Oh yeah, I was staying in Harlem, right. I was in the Bronx. I was in Manhattan, but we did, I put one of my trainers by mistake. I thought it was an up and coming area, but it's not. It no, 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 no. It wasn't you didn't think Harlem. it was that. I said it was an up and coming no, area to I make got feel confused. better. I got confused with Brooklyn. I thought, Brooklyn, That's the, I heard it's an up and coming area. Harlem, that's an up and coming area. And he went there and he's like, Is he still on the, is he still no, alive? No, no, I can't say who he is. He's is he still, still alive? Yeah, but he rang me up and he says, it's like, I'm in Grand Theft Auto, save me, he said. I'm like, you're on your own. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, I, in Vegas, there's none of these dead spots. There's always sets. And that's important. LA's got a lot of dead spots. Oh, my God, does it? Um, so, and there's also very little travel. There's very little travel in You mean Vegas. within Vegas yeah. itself? Yeah. It's just there. It's like, okay, that set didn't go well. Look, there's another set. It did go but well. But isn't it's it like... Constant. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing goes straight into another place, and then you've got everything. You've got the pool, you've got the casino, you've got mm -hmm. the club, and they're all... Perfect. It's perfect for practice. It is. That's the thing. It's perfect practice because a lot of people and Pete actually. Um, Pete is um, the principal um, instructor with you on the Vegas boot camps. Mm -hmm. Both of you. Very, very good at the strip club. Amazing. Unfortunately, he doesn't want to come on camera. He's very private like that. And plus, well, he... we we influenced his strip club game last time, and it was fucking brilliant. Oh, can you divulge? Ridiculous. It's just he's he's got a six step system. I don't want to set. No, no, no. Him. But can you give one step? <laughs> Go up and say, I've dated a girl like you and talk about a, a pretend ex, but don't call her like a stripper, call her a dancer, like an exotic Oh yeah, dancer. of course, yeah, euphemisms, all about euphemisms. But then yeah. building that connection, basically saying, yeah, I've, I've dated girls like you before, look, I'm not here for a dance, and actually get her off and when, when she has two minutes and take her for a drink at the bar, but it can't be a dance. So oh, no, 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 dancing You can not buy a drink, no. and even if that's more expensive than a dance, it sets the frame of kind of an instant date in there. But it was brilliant that we're, I think there were five or six students who were quite nervous and they, they use this. And they were literally on, they, I think three of them met up with, with strippers again from outside of the, you know, at a different time. Yeah, really think, bulletproof system. Do, do you know, um, when I started um, the company in 2009, the first course that I ran was Strip Game. Mm. And it's actually a five, and it's, it's very similar to Pete's, I think. And it's a five step system. Yeah, it's probably an amalgamation of yours. Yeah, and, and it's really, really fucking powerful because I started off just doing Strip Game because I was working for another company and I couldn't do boot camps until I'd officially left them. Mm. And um, you remember those strip? They were brilliant. They were fantastic. Um, good old days. So uh, there's no dead spots. It's easy to travel. Um, there's a range of people and ages. That's mm. another good thing. I think like sometimes... But also you get lots of hem parties there. So lots of girls just wanting to get loose and stuff. They have their hem party mm. and that environment breeds, you know, good times basically all around. Good times. Um, so, so I was saying, so Pete, Pete mentioned this to me. Uh, that some of the students said like, oh, but I'm from this small town in Oklahoma and, you know, I'm not going to be able to, <laughs> terrible accent, I'm not going to be able to run this kind of game in Oklahoma. Or, in the, the strip club game? No, no, no. Just that kind of ridiculous, like powerful high end game that we give them in Vegas. And, mm -hmm. and he's like, but you can, you just, you need to get the results and know you can do it. And then you just sort of, you, um, 
you just make some alterations sure. when you're you're back home. There's no point in like saying, okay, well, let's do day game in Oklahoma. There's just no fucking point because you're going to be wasting 80% of the time, you know, watching tumbleweed go that's, by or whatever. The thing is, is what we teach, I always find, is that something that can be used in London, what we do, the seven-day course, it can be used in New York, but it can also be used in a small village in Yorkshire mm -hmm. or a small town in Oklahoma. That's all our students, and, they yeah. say that. They say, I well, took it back to... We make sure that because we focus on conversation, we focus on the... Rather than using the set but the set is just the set yeah it's just Vegas loads just of sets of that's what we know but we need yes. loads of sets so otherwise we cannot teach if we don't have multiple sets we're just sitting there have you know drinking coffee giving theory and and that's mental masturbation because i know there are people out there and they just sit and give theory and the guy's hand over his money he's like great i've got a brain full of knowledge but i haven't actually practiced mm. it and then they go back to their small town and go shit I wish I had the opportunity to practice it. Vegas, perfect for that. I think, I think what's good about the Vegas boot camp as well is you've got a nice combination of the strip game, but then day game and night game and gutter game all mixed in. So you get to Sorry, try... did you say gutter game? Yeah, so this is when you're, oh, you're outside a casino and you're waiting... Uh, sorry, a casino club. You're waiting for them to kick out at 2 a.m. <laughs> so you've done audio. And you just try and take the girl straight up to your room. Just be very... From physical. the gutter? From the gutter, yeah. As she crawls out of <laughs> the, the gutter of the club, out up she goes. That's gutter game. That's what you call it. Are you serious? Yeah, Gus again. Oh, fantastic. You know, my students love you, Josie. They adore you. They adore both of you, but for different reasons. <laughs> Does he's like, Does he's much more about, you know, on the date and things like that and deep connection and so forth. You won't get deep connection on Vegas Bootcamp, that's for sure. You won't, but she does conversation skills. And... I get deep connection down in Vegas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Different yes. type of deep connection. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... It's the best same night lay opportunities in Vegas also. Yeah. What um, happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Again, with the gutter game. It's just oh, so God, easy. Can we, can we move on? No, but seriously, the best part <laughs> is you come out of a club, you come out of a club in the casino, you're staying in the casino, and you just take the girl instant day either to your room or to the With bar. the mud still on her and the, you and know. Yeah, the sweat and the dreariness, yeah. It works, of course. Vegas is the best place for a same yeah. day lay. Yeah, it is. Uh, same day lay, that's even better. I was going to say same night lay. Um, the, the madness of vague Vegas is now or never. Mm -hmm. It's got a very now or never kind of vibe. But that's a good point, actually. I just want to touch on yeah, it. Yeah. A lot of guys, they try and take a number in Vegas when actually... Oh, no, it's bullshit. It yeah, yeah, because it's so transient. So a girl might only be there for a day. So always go instant dates. That's what I'd say to guys who are there. Always try for the instant date. You see, another thing... Um, is that if we, because like I said, we used to run these boot camps in other cities and people were so cautious because they're you know, thinking, oh, I might bump into someone I know. Yeah. I go here quite a lot. So they couldn't really practice everything like with that very relaxed, mm -hmm. open mind. So I think that's another very strong point. Yeah, unless they live in Vegas. I do. No, I have a friend that lives in Vegas. He's doing very well for himself. He sells ties. Oh, it's a clever oh, business. Yeah, you need to get in place. So you just sell stuff. You really? make your fortune because people, <laughs> people come up. over their swimming costumes. That's hilarious. So I had a funny experience in Vegas. I, um, <laughs> we chatted up. I, um, was, um, watching a, a, a show called, um, what's his name? David Copperfield show. The Magic. Yeah, yeah. The Magic Guy. The Magician. Yeah, was the Magic Charles Man. Dickens play. <laughs> yeah, in Vegas. And, um, he called me up on stage called me up on stage, made me hold a scorpion. And I was like, wow, you know, um, I'm, I, I was like chosen, you know, for, to go up on stage. And then years later, I read in this, art, in this article about him that he only selects the most beautiful woman in the audience to come up on his show. So I was quite chuffed. I didn't yeah. know. I thought I was sitting in the right seat or something. And my boyfriend at the time had paid for that special seat for me to be chosen. But no, it was a low cut top. <laughs> I did it. Here, some... Um, some differences between uh, American um, American phrases and British phrases. Okay, it's a little quiz. Okay. <clears throat> if you say car park, what do they say? Parking lot. Well done. Bum bag. Fanny pack. Oh, she's oh, this. She's Toilets. Bathroom, restroom. Well sure. done. Car boot. Get, uh, no, car boot, oh, right, you're wrong, whatever it was. I thought you were going to say, say car boot sale, and I was going to say a garage sale. <laughs> like, oh, so, do I look like someone <laughs> who go to a car boot sale, darling? Gherkins. Pickle. Well done. Post a letter. Mail, Mail letter. Mail, Mail letter. Mail. 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 M
half eight, half eight, eight thirty. Eight thirty. You remember I had this conversation yeah. once. I said I'll see you at half eight. I, go, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. He actually said that to me. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Half eight. Uh, sorry, eight thirty. And remember Q line. They don't know the difference. Yeah, yeah, they don't. Line, line, they say. Yeah, yeah no, no, I remember so she saying, kept saying, "Is this the Q?" Is this like, the Q? What? No, it wasn't even what. It was just <laughs> like silence. Is it the Q? Yeah. This is where we line up. Oh yeah, <laughs> completely different languages. Different languages. Exper- uh, now, experience is dating American girls and British girls in London or in the states. Whatever. That's, what, what, what do you find the difference between British and American girls? I think, for, in my point of view, from my point of view, American girls are a lot more open. I think British girls tend to be a bit more closed, whereas American girls they tend to be yeah, uber friendly and, and more open and, and more less far more receptive to just going on a date than in there. So the ability to go on an instant date in the UK, I've gone on instant dates with about five American girls, whereas British girls, they tend to be harder in my experience to go on an instant date with. They wear their heart on the sleeves, Americans, don't they? They're very, they very much open are, yeah. about how they feel, like, where is this going? I want to have that dialogue. I want to have that discussion. But that's quite nice. No, I'm not cr- criticising from, it. From a guy's point of view, where a lot of British women are maybe a little bit more cagey and don't mm-hmm. necessarily say what they mean a lot of the time, American women tend to be a bit more forward and open. So for a lot of guys, it actually makes life a little bit easier, in my experience. No, this is not about who's right and who's no, wrong. Absolutely. This is just about the sure. differences. Your experience... Dating Americans when you were living there and dating the British? Um, I think they are much more forward initially. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to, you know, you go on dates, when you come to actually cementing what is actually going on, I actually find the British much more, let's talk about it now. Ah. We've made that step, we've made that section. Awkwardness gone. What's going on? Ah, okay. So the Americans, it might be like dating for much longer. Mm-hmm. And thinking about it and then you know seeing what happens are you yeah. are you saying when you want to make it something more yeah when it long-term. goes into something more long term so you want to establish a bit more flaky with that. yeah i think so okay um or maybe that again is that whole getting confused of how much of a connection you've actually made with somebody mm-hmm. whereas i would think oh, okay obviously we've made quite a lot of good connection now uh maybe americans don't necessarily see it that way americans are less intimidated by looks they value beauty. They like British can be very intimidated by looks. Have you seen American porn versus British porn? <laughs> British porn like some fucking dogs on there. There was one. There, there's one. Uh, there's a there's a porn porn movie and it's doing the rounds. This is like sorry, I does it. This is already becoming more gutter. Um, <laughs> it was about six years ago, and the Americans were saying, "Look at what the British." are like watching, wanking off, jerking off to this. I don't say wanking, they say jerking. <laughs> it was this like really fat British guy fucking a uh, fat British woman. They were like from Newcastle or something. And he had a fag in his mouth. What? <laughs> he was like, I'm pretty sure. Like where did you no, no, find no, no, it? I'm pretty sure it there's an American equivalent to that as well. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but, but, they, the but, the, but they said that the, the British, <laughs> look what they're getting off. Offer. If you look at British poor, they're they're not as good looking. They're not as no, of course not. But that's just good. American girls, in my opinion, are better looking than British girls. Yes, but oh no, you can. So find... they have a stronger pool of people. Mm. Yeah, they have them. a bigger pool. Yes, but I think British men like the girl next door. They like that girl next door, the one who's got a bit fucked up teeth. You know, she's. Do they? Yeah, they do. So they I do. Think I, I, I know. What you consider the girl next door, and what I think people mean. What's the girl down? next door? Am I the girl someone next door? With, no, I would say someone who's no. pretty but sweet looking. Yeah, cute, yeah. cute. Sort but of. that is what the but British man loves. No, I disagree. <laughs> but they've always got their <laughs> teeth, the British. That's, that's, that's not what the British, British man loves. <laughs> I'm Absolutely British. Not. British people, apart from us three, for some fucking reason. Okay, they do more. not They do not love this. I don't know. I, don't know if I you think, I think you, but you, them. listen, I'm sorry. You run off. You run off every one, every two off. weeks to Odessa because you need to find this beautiful woman. You but go they to are, Rio. Okay, if you're talking about looks, they, globally yes. speaking, the Russians smash the Americans. Obviously, yeah, absolutely. I was very Rocky for that. Was yeah. <laughs> smash, smash, <laughs> smash the American. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I, I think that the Americans are not intimidated by beauty. They look at a beautiful girl like I'm gonna fucking go for that. I think they do, and the British are like, oh, she's gonna be a bitch. I think there's a, yeah, there's a definitely a stereotype there, for yeah. sure. But I think if, if for the best looking girls, I've said this before, but California in America, they're the they're hottest girls there. Oh, yeah, and then Vegas, because so many go to Vegas, so that's another good thing. Do you know where the most promiscuous part of America is? 
Vegas? No, no. Somewhere random. Portland. Oregon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know where the most promiscuous part of the UK is? Which which city? Newcastle. That was second. Liverpool. No, that was third. Liverpool, like Liverpool. as you really? say, Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah. That's, uh, it was Liverpool, the Oxford, then Newcastle. Oxford. Yeah, it must be all the drunk students. The uni, okay. Yeah. Okay, so how can we summarise this? Mm-hmm. It's easier to approach in America. So I find that in our boot camps, we're spending so much more time on sexual escalation mm-hmm. and um, keeping the conversation, um, you know, becoming the, the guy becoming the main priority of the girls' attention and conversation because Americans, they will go to shiny other nice things that happen mm-hmm. to come their way. That is where it's really hard. That the, the, the approach, starting a conversation, that's pretty easy. Massively easier than London. Yeah. And there's less social anxiety with the Americans yeah. also. Uh, not all. I mean, a lot have approach anxiety, but uh, Europeans tend to have it more. Our main focus with American students in America, or anyone really in going to America, is a sexual escalation. Is actually finding, yeah, getting rid of the really false is. positives and finding the, the actual girls that are interested. Absolutely. Um, and in Europe, it's much more about the approach, getting over that awful transition from opening line to full-blown comfort. And I always say that's where most men fall apart like a cheap suit. And that's where Hadassah is amazing. Mm-hmm. She is incredible at this. She's all very much about, you know, this is what you, you're given. She says, I'm a secretary. And rather than you going, right, let's change the subject. Use it. Use it. Mm-hmm. Use it and make it everything, interesting. Everything, everything is a hook. Everything you're given is Active a hook. Listening. Right down to the way she says it mm-hmm. and the environment she's in, where you're standing. And I think once you're, well, I know for sure that once you have been accepted into that group, because it's usually a group of women in Europe, or once you've become her main priority, the sexual escalation is so much easier. The hard bit is at the beginning in Europe and the hard bit is the second part. In America, I would say. I think London especially is tough because it's such a busy environment that people just don't have time. It's, it's probably the same in New York as well, to be fair. And there's, a lot, of good, and there's a, good, a lot of good-looking people in London also. There's yeah. a lot more competition. But, you know, again, we could run boot camps in Liverpool. We could run boot camps in Liverpool. They do, don't they, though? <laughs> I had to say it. Um, they, we could run run them in Oxford. I, I get people calling up for Cardiff, especially. Oh, you must come to Cardiff and, and do one there. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, we could, but then you're not going to have as many sets to choose from. London's Again, it's like Vegas. People. It's, yeah, it's You've got to get the practice in. It's not about theory, guys. It's not just about theory. You've got to get the practice in. Also, if you can approach in somewhere like London, it's one of the toughest cities to do this because it's so busy. If you can yeah. get the skill set, day game skill set down here, you can go anywhere else in the world and it becomes a lot easier. Paris is still the hardest. Yeah, don't then go London. To Paris. <laughs> just avoid Paris. Just go see the Louvre and go back home. Right, just um, before we go, um, I wanted you to tell the listeners and viewers uh, what they can expect from Las Vegas. Not, 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 you know, the results, but just like when they like get off the plane, what happens next? Sure. So get to the hotel. Um, Meet up with all the other guys, you know, trade a few war stories, go out to a strip club and basically just learn the strip game. Pete's strip Well, that's game Friday Sarah. night. That's Friday night. Ah, okay. Uh, there's, a, there's a caveat to that. So um, Friday night is optional. Mm-hmm. So you can come. Um, it's, it's like an added bonus. You don't have to do it. The actual official, the official boot camp. I think every, but everyone likes, everyone likes the unofficial uh, start for the, uh, the boot camp, that Friday night one. Yeah. The strip game. But the actual official boot camp, because some people can only make it for Saturday morning mm-hmm. till Sunday afternoon, what happens? The, it's classroom, first of all. It's classroom, first of all, but just a point about the strip game. If you can do it, do it. It's the, the, it was the most fun and most successful thing, actually, during the whole boot camp, mm-hmm. I think, for mm-hmm. a lot of guys. Okay. But if they can't do that, meet up, bit of classroom theory, and then get out and start doing day games straight away. And they work with you, they work with Hadassah, they work with Pete. Pete as well. And we have a few others that go out there when we have the really big boot camps. It depends. I Basically, when people contact me, I then decide who's going to... You're always there, mm-hmm. you're always there, and um, Pete's obviously always there. Sure. Um, but then if people sort of saying they have a lot more approach anxiety, I'll put Mark J there. If mm-hmm. people seem to be like pretty already it's getting... It's tailored to the boot camp, yeah. Exactly. So... 
so with the with the theory on Saturday day, we do try and keep it minimal. It's very much basics and just get them out because as you said, it's about using the fact there's lots of people there to just really try and experience this, you know, mm -hmm. take action and that's how you learn to do day game very well. Yeah, and the feedback is very, um, as I said, it's undiluted, it's mm -hmm. unfiltered, okay? So if people are coming here to be told how amazing they are, get it, okay? There's lots of different courses out there that will tell you that, you know, you're wonderful, you're fantastic, give me your money, fuck off. Whereas we want them to get results and, you know, that's what I pride myself in. in we don't it. just send people off and go... Oh, no, 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 whilst we sit there boozing. And, no. and have, like, uh, ex-students teaching them. We've done yeah. Like it. yeah, that's what I see from unnamed other classes. Yeah, well, we won't put down other people. We won't, we won't mention other companies, if there are any. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's about the feedback that you give. I mean, sure. you know, you can see today, like just how unfiltered Josie's um, advice is and, and experiences are. So if someone did badly, you'll say, look, you did badly, but this is why you did badly. And this is how to, to correct it for next time. Yeah, I think what's cool as well is guys tend to be matched on the boot camp. So it's, they build this sort of camaraderie and they'll go out and, and any dead time, they'll go and wing each other and stuff. And they, these, yeah. lots of the guys from last boot camp, you know, I still speak to and they're still in touch with each other and they go and meet up and stuff. So it's, mm. it's really about meeting like other guys you can really get on with and stuff like that. Do they meet up in Oklahoma? Hope not, hope not. So next day, mm -hmm. you all meet up and it's in the classroom. Yep, so we'll do minimal theory. We really want to give the guys the basics, then go and get stuck in straight away and use the fact there's loads of people there. They're on holiday and they're there to have fun. And you um, will work with, is it two students to three? Two to three students? Yeah, about three okay. to one ratio. Yeah. Okay, great. And you give, as you can see from this episode, Josie gives that really unfiltered advice. You know, it's, it's straight talking. And I think that there's a lot of people out there and they... Unfortunately, they don't really want results. They just want to hear how wonderful they are mm. and how everyone else is shit and They're how women are shit and they, they're the ones who are misunderstood. And uh, we don't do that. It's about giving you, delivering you real results. And you can't achieve that if everyone's putting you in a bubble, telling you how fantastic you are. Of course, yes, you are fantastic, but how are you marketing yourself? You are, you're, it's the most important product is you. So you, it's about marketing, isn't it? How you're mm. marketing yourself. We don't need to tell you what a great guy you are. If you're on this boot camp or on the seven day mastery program, you obviously think you're a great guy because you believe you deserve better than what you're currently getting. It's the people who are like, oh no, I, I'm shit. I'm just gonna carry on having shit results and waiting for lady luck to strike. They're the ones who have got real deep, uh, you know, they're really lacking, I should say, self-belief mm -hmm. because they don't really think that there's anything better out for them. So we know that. We know you're great. You got it. But it's about skills. It's about what do I say to the woman? Mm -hmm. What do I say next to the woman? What if she says this? What if she doesn't speak English? What do I say then? And we've got the answers. So you will show them step by step what to do next. You and Pete mm -hmm. and Hadassah. Mm -hmm. And if there's Mark J there or Pedro, whoever it is out there at that time, sure. we'll give that direct feedback and advice. Yeah, and it's, it's very much experiential learning. We, mm -hmm. we minimise the, the classroom time yeah. because we want to just give them the basics because they learn by doing. That's how of you course, do it. Of course, of course. So we'll, we'll typically go to maybe somewhere like the Forum of the Bellagio or like a, one of the main streets mm -hmm. and just do loads and loads of day game, you know, mm -hmm. really get through it. Then you sort of regroup mm -hmm. and... Um, Often the guys will go off and, and, and maybe grab a, coffee with each other. And they'll have a couple of dates, instant yeah, dates. Yeah, instant dates. And some, you know, the other guys will probably go off, have some food together and get to know each other a bit because mm -hmm. it's about building that sort of camaraderie of like-minded guys. Mm -hmm. And then you do uh, more theory and it's questions and it's feedback and then it's going out. Now, we have like a, a wide range of students who attend all our boot camps, including the London one. And... Uh, the older guys sometimes prefer, not always, but they sometimes prefer to go to some more chilled out kind of rooftop mm -hmm. bars. Yeah, so the, the older guys, they're, they're, the environment's more tailored for them. And basically. the dust is very good with those ones also. Yeah, because often they want to do more quiet discussion, conversations, practice mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. And then the younger guys, they will take them to a club. They want it wild. Yeah, yeah. we'll go wild to, to a club. And, and we'll although we them. allow our students, the, the trainers can't drink. They can't drink. I'm sure you guys have one or two drinks, but uh, on the whole, you know, you obviously it's professional. You don't mm -hmm. get wasted. And sure. um, what happens if one of the guys like just wants to get plastered? 
Well, we're just kind of reminding why he's there. He's invested mm -hmm. his own money, you know, so we're just bringing him back down. And, he doesn't and want it to, to be, be honest, a blur, does he? We've never really had that happen, so... No, I've not, never seen it either, no. Okay, um, and then you go out, and then I'd say whopping, what, 50%? 40%, 50% go back with a girl that evening. Yeah, I lost some of I think five girls, five guys went home with, with five different girls. And that was out of 10 students. And that was after one day of training. And these guys, I'd spoke to them the next day, none of them had ever had one night stands. Amazing. So it was actually just pushing them into a lot of conversations. Yeah. And next day, that's a bit more theory, isn't it? Because that's like, okay, what happens next? Dates, all their questions are answered. Yeah, we want to give them that process of not just being able to, to meet girls, but then how do you deal with the texting? Because it's a three-stage thing. It's the meeting, the texting, and the dating. So the next day, we kind of fill in the gaps with the, the texting and the dating stuff. So when they go back home, although Vegas is a different environment, it's still cross-applicable to then applying. We want to give them stuff they can apply to their own lives. Also, so they know exactly also what happens next. Yeah, yeah. They make sure they've got a nice plan set in order so they go home and they go, right, that wasn't just some strange dream. Yeah, it was the boot camp effect where they need use. to just keep going with it. And often we'll, 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 we'll sit them down individually and give them a, a sort of an approaching plan for day game uh, to be doing a certain number per week and, and just get them going with that. How thoughtful of you. Yeah, <laughs> it's very much, not, it is a weekend away in a strange yeah, environment, it's... but it's geared around making them better. And that's often why a lot of them want to come back yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Fine. By the way, are you an emoji man? Do you send emojis? I do. The smirky oh, face. Fuck. Smirky what emoji face. do you send? I send gifts. Do you send the like the poo one? I <laughs> <laughs> send. Oh, that one. Okay. That's her favourite one. She loves it. It's her screensaver. I send. I send gifts. Okay. I do that, which is also. I don't. Bad. What do I send? I don't send any emojis. I don't know. Do you know how to text yet, Kaz? <laughs> Do you know that I've got no apps on my phone? Oh no, I've got an Uber app, that's it. You don't have WhatsApp? Oh no, WhatsApp. WhatsApp, is that an app? Yeah. Of course. WhatsApp. I don't have Facebook, now. I don't have... That's good, no. that's good. Yeah. Instagram though? No, no Instagram. Good. I'm free. It's good, feels good. Okay, listen, guys, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show, a piece of the Attraction podcast. It's been great having you. Lots of information there. Um, if you're interested in the Vegas boot camps or the UK boot camps, check out the website kezia-noble.com. You'll find uh, all the information there. Um, yeah. So thanks again, guys. It's been great. Hope to see you soon on one of my live events. Take care.